at solving linear systems by graphing. A system of two linear equations with two variables, x and y, also called a linear system, consists of two equations that can be written in the following form. ax plus by equals c, dx plus dy equals x. So it's your um, variables equal your constant. A solution of a system of linear equations in two variables is an ordered pair. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph these two equations when we get real equations and we're going to see where do they cross what is the um, solution of my system can I have graphs that don't cross yes so there would be no solution things like that so that is an option so a solution of a system of linear equations in two variables is an ordered pair in x and y that satisfies each equation okay solutions correspond to points where the graph of the equation is a system. Important parts is this. Solution of a system of a linear equation in two variables is an ordered pair. If you can remember that, it will make life easier. Okay? It is an ordered pair. If you are still writing, I'm going to switch it. What? System of two linear equations in two variables, x and y, are also called a linear system. So when you have two equations, you have something called a linear system. It is. It'll also be on Power School tonight when I'm done teaching seven. Though. on power school too so we can go back and copy it down or look in your book because those definitions are there as well let's look at an example so it says graph the linear systems estimate the solution then check the solution algebraically so we have a lot to do how do i graph these systems what do i have to do to graph them yes tyler yeah i want to subtract 4x right so that this equation says y equals negative 4x plus 8. Okay, let's start with that. How do I graph that? I start at positive 8. Okay, and is this a rising slope or a falling slope? It is falling. I'm going to count by twos just so you know so that I can fit everything on this graph. This is going to be 2, this is going to be negative 2, this is going to be 2, negative 2. Okay, so if I count by 2s, I'm going to start at 8, Tyler says. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And you're going to go what? What's my slope? Down, forward, over 1. So down 2, 4, over halfway. Okay, down 2, 4, over halfway. So here's my line. This is where I can. I just counted four down again and over one again. I went down two, four, over one. And I went down two, four, over one. I just did it twice so I could get a better line. Okay. Now, what about the equation, the other equation, 2x minus 3y equals 18? What does that come out to be? How do I fix that? Add y to. No. I mean, add. 2x to each side. Subtract 2x oh, from each side. So subtract 2x, right? And you should get negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 18. Then what? Divide by negative 3. So my equation says y equals positive 2 thirds x minus, what's 18 divided by 3? 6. 6. Minus 6. So now I need to graph this. Where do I start my graph? Negative, Negative 6. So 2, 4, 6. And then what is my slope? Two, two, three, up 2 over 2, 3. Okay. And then up 2 over 3 again. it says 
says, from there it says, um, estimate the solution, okay? So what do you think this point is right here where they cross? What would that estimating of that solution be? Three negative two. What do you think? Three what? Negative two. Three negative two. Uh, it's below negative two. So three, negative three-ish, something like that. Maybe. My line's not perfectly straight. I bet you they're looking for this, though. I'm gonna go with three negative four, just to play it safe, because I think this line is supposed to go like that. Okay, so if I do that, they want us to then check. So how do I check algebraically? What do you think I do? Does it matter which equation you plug it into? No. I'm gonna plug it into this one because it's easiest. It has no fraction and I don't have to worry about that. So if I plug this in to here to check, I would get negative four equals negative four times three plus eight. What is negative four times three? Negative 12, what's negative 12 plus eight? So does negative four equal negative four? So that is my solution point. So you have to graph it. What I suggest on your homework is two things. One, make sure you use graph paper. Two, make sure you use a straight edge when you're drawing your lines. Okay? And then you have to take too much work. It does take work, Brady. I'm sorry. Because if I had a straight line, then you would see that this would go through three negative four better. Okay? So use a straight edge because it will help you and it will save you a headache. Okay? So that is graphing the linear system and checking. Okay, classifying systems. A system that has at least one solution is considered consistent. So one solution is consistent. You're gonna to have to be able to label these systems. If a system has no solution, okay, no solution, it is inconsistent. A consistent system that has exactly one solution is independent. Okay, so I have two overall terms, and then my overall term breaks down into two separate terms. So consistent is at least one solution. Independent is exactly one. So if it says consistent independent, that means it fits the criteria of consistent. It has at least one solution, but it has only one solution. And a consistent system that has infinite solutions, okay, is considered dependent. So what would be an infinite solution? What would be an example of systems that are infinite solutions? Mm, no. Kind of tricky because you don't really see it. So if I have a line and the line um, ends up graphing on top of another line. Like the line's coincide, they graph on top of each other. That's when I have infinite solutions because the line is graphed on top of the other line, okay? That can happen. That's an infinite dependent. So here are pictures of what those look like. Exactly one solution, okay? Exactly one solution would be consistent and independent, okay? Infinite solutions are when my lines graph on top of each other, the lines coincide. That's considered consistent and dependent. And then no solution would be parallel lines because they're never going to cross, okay? So the only time that you have inconsistent is when they are parallel. Because parallel lines are the only time that they will never cross. So that's pretty easy to tell. And you should be able to tell that by looking. Slope. Yes. Okay. okay. This is how we're going to solve systems by graphing, okay? One solution is consistent and independent if it has exactly one solution. If it has infinite solutions, it's consistent and dependent because it depends on each other to have all those be the same. If there is no solution, it is considered inconsistent. 
we will have to be able to look at pictures. You'll have to be able to graph it yourself and tell me what's going on, okay? Those are the things I'm looking for or you're gonna look for in your homework tonight. So get familiar with the terms consistent um, and independent, consistent and dependent, and the term independent or, in, or inconsistent. So consistent and independent, consistent and dependent, inconsistent. equations again where it says solve the system, classify the system as consistent and independent, consistent and dependent, or inconsistent. So in order to solve this, what do I have to do? I have to graph both of these things and just wait, I don't get confused. And um, besides graphing, I'm also going to have to go ahead and rearrange these equations so that I can graph them the way I need to. Okay. So equation one. What would equation one come out to be? I need to put it in y equals mx plus b form. What am I going to do? Subtract 4x so that you get negative 3y equals negative 4x plus 8. Then what? Divide by negative 3. And you get y equals 4 thirds x. And what is 8 divided by negative 3? Negative 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, so we graph this first. We graph the y-intercept at negative 2 and 2 thirds. So negative 2 and 2 thirds is approximately here. See how this is going to be an approximation if you're doing that. I'm going up 4 over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Okay. And I'm going to eyeball this again so it's going to be rough. along those lines. Straight edge. This is why straight edges are important. Okay. How do I solve this equation here? Subtract 8x. Subtract 8x and you would get negative 6y equals negative 8x plus 16. Now what? Divide by negative 6. What does 8x, oh, what does 8 over 6 reduce to? 1.3. 1.3? Oh, I didn't want a fraction. I meant reduce. I want it in fraction form. So both are divisible by two, so four, four thirds, thirds, right? So y equals four thirds x plus what's sixteen divided by negative six? Well, not plus six minus. Negative six. Sixteen divided by negative six should be negative two and two thirds. What do we know about this right here? What's going to happen with those? If you look at those two equations, what happened? Mm -hmm. They go on top of each other. So if they go on top of each other, they have the same slope, and I literally started at the same point. That means I'm graphing these on top of each other. If they're graphed on top of each other, are they considered consistent and independent? Consistent and dependent or inconsistent? I did go up to four and over three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Right? Okay. So, what did you say it was? The second one. Yes, it is consistent and dependent. Okay? So it's number two, consistent. I counted by ones on this, that's why I didn't label it any different. Okay, so it's consistent and dependent. So you're going to have to be able to graph them and then tell me which of the three they are. Can you handle that? Okay. I think you can. Okay. Um, this is another. Of this. If 
I solve this equation, this is easy. I get y equals negative 2x plus 4, right? If I solve this equation, I get y equals negative 2x plus 1, okay? Go to graph these. We're going to make a graph right here. go to graph all of this. Parallel. What? Mm -hmm. If they're parallel. parallel, what does that mean? Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Good. Yes. So they're going to be parallel, and I can tell without even graphing, but it does tell me to graph it. One, two, three, four. Oops. Four. And then I'm going down to over one. If it's parallel, what are they again if it's parallel? Inconsistent. Good, inconsistent. So one, I go down two over one, they are parallel. Straight lines are important. Okay, so I now have an inconsistent. Graph. This is why it's important that you know how to graph lines. Okay, last thing, and then I don't know how much time we'll have because it's shorter today. You ride an express bus from the center of town to your street. You have two payment options. Option A is to buy a monthly pass that, pay, that is a dollar per ride. Option B is to pay $2.50 per ride. A monthly pass costs $30. After how many rides will the total cost of the two options be the same? So you have two payment options. Option A is to buy a monthly pass and pay a dollar per ride. Option B is to pay two fifty dollars per ride. A monthly pass costs $30. After how many rides will the total cost of the two options be the same? What do I need to set up? Whoa. Okay, that's the most important. Uh, what do I need to set up? An equation. An equation, okay. What? Uh, how many equations? Two, because I have option A and I have option B. So if option A is this, let's set up an equation for option A. Option A is to buy a monthly pass. Okay, what do we know about monthly pass? It is monthly pass. Option A is to buy a monthly pass and pay a dollar per ride. Okay, and a monthly pass costs thirty dollars. So there's an extra fee of thirty dollars as well. Okay, that's what that means. So if I set up an equation for option A, it would be y equals um, one times my unknown plus the annual fee. Okay, that's what that means. Now, option B is what? 250 per ride, right? Okay, so 250 per ride. So I would have y equals 250 times x. So then from there, I would graph these two things, okay? If I go and graph these, I will be able to then see where they cross. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't have a good graph because this is 30, which is crazy. You can use that board. Oh, yeah, I can use that board. Okay. So if I have 30, where does 30 go? Uh, let's count. These are like Then from there, I have a slope of zero, zero, but my rise is 250 times whatever, so it's halfway, right? 250 and then over one. This is gonna be worse. So what I need is a straight edge and graph paper. Anyhow, come across up here someplace. Okay. Um, and they wanna know where that 
that solution point would be. So when you graph it, it would work out much better than when I graph it, clearly. Um, but it says that when you do it, it looks like it comes out to 2050 is the solution point. Okay? So whenever we graph it, it looks like 2050 we're going to estimate. Then I can plug that in and solve and see if that is true or not. Like if they both come out to the same thing, then I'm good to go. So if I say 50 equals 20 times 1 plus 30, I get 50 equals 50. Okay, that works. If I plug 2050 into here, I get 20 equals 250 times Plug it in again. So everything is plugged and chunked tonight. This is what you're working. 